Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. Making his debut here as a leader here at the Jazz Standard tonight is harmonica player Gregoire Marais, who hails from Switzerland. And over the last five to six years, he's played with a plethora of dynamic artists, ranging from Herbie Hancock to Cassandra Wilson. He's being hailed as the next Toots Stillman meets Larry Adler, but I think that he's bringing a whole different type of voice to the harmonica. Tonight we're going to sit down and talk about him growing up in Switzerland, how he was exposed to blues and jazz, as well as his foray into the United States studying here, as well as becoming a dynamic session musician, as well as evolving into a great leader. <laughs> Congratulations on your Thank debut you. CD. You I mean, much. this is a very courageous project because it's it. I understand it took you three years to really put this all this together. Yes, that's correct. It took me about three years to compose most of the tunes, arrange some of the others, and then basically uh, produce with Federico uh, Gonzalez Peña the, the record because it's been uh, and Matt Pearson did some as well because it's been there's a lot of pre-production and post-production that really took a long time to accomplish basically. Writing these songs and writing these compositions, you have special guests on here. What were you thinking in mind because I'm hearing a lot of all the musicians that you've backed over the last 10 years on this one project. Yeah, not everybody but a few for sure like and um, some really really special guests. I mean if I mentioned Cassandra Wilson, it was very obvious for me to, that I, I wanted to invite her because I've been playing with, with her for about 10 years, on and off. And she's been a huge um, force in terms of getting me to, to take risk, explore, and try to come with, with new stuff on my instrument. So, and she, invited, she, she accepted the invitation, so it was real special. So I wrote really this arrangement especially for her. In your collaboration with Raul Midan. So another collaboration, we first started playing, I, I actually recorded with him first and then played with, with him. He's, do, he's doing a lot of solo shows, playing both guitar and singing. And I was uh, invited to guest with, with him. And then when I did this record, I had this real special sound in, in mind and I thought Raul could be real 
perfect basically for this song so he did it and he he, he did it even much better than I was expecting he's so amazing yeah you know when we think of traditional musicians saxophone piano drums you come in a whole nother vernacular with the harmonica and how easy or how hard is it to write music with you being the lead on harmonica backing a guitarist or a pianist yeah it's, it's really all about music so when i think when i write I th i'm really I'm submerged and, and really all about the, the moment and the, the music that I'm creating. I don't think really particular about like harmonica per se in terms of the difficulty of the instrument. Then I'll, I'll deal with the difficulty later, later when, when uh, I'm in front of the piece and I have to play it. But also for me the, the, the harmonica is very very close to the voice which is one of the reasons why I have so many vocalists on the record because I, I wanted to have that kind of special uh, relationship you know, to be really sh showcased on the record. And um, so I, most of the time when I do write, I, I hear a melody that is almost really kind of a melody that is, is written for a vocalist. And then for me, it makes a lot of sense to play it because the, the harmonica is being so close to the, vo to the voice. in Switzerland and you really started off playing the blues harp but you graduated to the chromatic. Tell me about your origins and how you got exposed to, to jazz music over in Switzerland. My father is a jazz musician so I was born in that music basically but he was playing um, uh, and, and listening to earlier jazz like jazz from the 30s and 40s but it was basically just in my blood since I the day of my birth. How did you get to the point where you decided that the harmonica was going to be your voice? I was probably about 16, 17. I, I just realized how amazing that instrument was, how special I felt in, when I was playing it. It was just magical. And uh, basically I just uh, kept on practicing, trying to get better and better and better because I just knew this instrument was real special. I had no idea if I was going to have any sort of career or if I was going to, whatever I was going to do musically, but I just knew how much I loved that instrument. What do you think about some of the origins or some of the great harmonica players like Stevie Wonder, Larry Adler, and right. Toots Stillmans? What, what do you think about the road that they had to pay for you to be where you're at right now? And how important is it now that you're bringing a different voice to this instrument? It's very important and 
to showcase, basically to show how important it is, I invited two cinemas on the record to, to come and play with me uh, on, on a piece uh, with the whole orchestra because I really wanted to make it real special, you know. I mean, I, I owe a lot to Toots Tillmans in terms of what he did, how what he created on the instruments. It's just huge. And Stevie Wonder as well, for sure. And Larry Adler to, to a certain extent too, for sure. As, but, so I will never be, uh, I will never be thankful enough, you know, for, for their contribution. I mean, I'm still a student of, and a, a big fan of Toots in a sense. Like I still listen to what he does and I'm really amazed by by his his genius, you know, there's like the, the true uh, perfect sounds he's able to get and the, the, the way he hears harmonies and melodies is just absolutely amazing. And I, he influenced me a lot, you know. Now, I don't think I, I've, I've ever copied him because when I first met him, when I was 17, he heard me a little bit and it was like, you know, if you do like the way I play, he was like, you should take my my approach on the harmonica as an example to allow you to go further or to, to find your own way. And that's basically what I took as, as um, he, I took his advice very seriously and I was like, okay, this is just amazing to, to receive some, some, some advice like that from uh, such a master. So I, that's what I try to do. And then basically also the kind of situation, musical situation I was invited to participate in where totally different from what Toots was doing so it really pushed me from to try to find something else basically on the instrument when I was playing for instance with Steve Coleman and Ravi Coltrane and different people like that so it kind of pushed me to force me in a sense almost but in a good way to find something personal because nobody ever approached the harmonica on that music ever nobody ever tried anything like that that you know, s different kind of metrics and that, that real angular phrasing, you know, it's, it's completely different. Tell me about the importance of jazz and harmonica, how the two worlds have meshed. Because we talked about Toots earlier and we talked about Larry, but tell me about right now in 2012 how important that this instrument needs to be heard now. This instrument has always been real special and has been unfortunately forgotten, you know, a, a, except for the blues, which is an amazing art form. But the chromatic harmonica has been basically completely ignored for the last 50 years with the exception of Toots Tillmans and Stevie Wonder. So they were able to really basically reopen the door and showing that this instrument is, is absolutely amazing. And I just, that's the same way I feel. I feel like it's such a beautiful instrument, a very noble instrument that always been misunderstood in a sense, you know. So it's really important to to do justice, you know, to basically how how special this instrument is, and show and and and, and be real honest about the fact that it's just as as 
as amazing of an instrument as piano, guitar, or anything else, and it should be really studied uh, seriously by people, and it should be really understood in the, in the right, you know, it should be shown in the right way, basically. That's all I would say. And I hope I'm, I'm contributing to that, you know. You are because Suzuki has a line of your harmonicas right now, right. and I understand that they let you try out some harmonicas, and then you told them, no, this is what needs to be corrected, and then immediately they gave you some brand new ones, and you guys have been with each other forever. I started the relationship with Suzuki when I was in Japan with uh, Pamithini, the Pamithini group, in 2005, I do believe, and um, they just gave me some some instrument to try just to see how I would feel and how I like those instruments and I was like well this is some really good stuff but also I think we if you want my opinion I know that certain things could be improved so they were like man we are eager to to make it better so basically I, during that tour I would give them certain critic on the on the instrument I would be like well this could be better this could be better blah, blah. and then they was very very excited about those comments and they would really send me an instrument while I was still on tour in Japan every few days with the correction so I was like wow this is absolutely amazing so after a few weeks already the instrument were just a world apart from whatever I tried first and then I, I realized that they were really special as, as a company for doing something like that listening to the, the musician and really trying to improve what was um, being made by them so and after a few years, they decided they wanted to do a signature model, which was really exactly the instrument I wanted to do. So we, we took four years of, of, of investigation, trial, and all kinds of stuff to be able to get to the instrument I'm playing right now, which is an absolute amazing instrument. It's the best harmonica, basically, I think. jazz music mean to you? I'm, it's hard for me to, I just love jazz music, but I'll, I'll say what is music to me because I, I don't really think in terms of jazz or this or that. And I think actually my music kind of shows that even though it's in the category of jazz, I think it goes beyond boundaries, you know, of, of you, it's difficult to name really this music because it, it'll go anywhere. It could be also named world music, it could be named jazz, it could be named anything because it, it goes in so many different territories basically so for me what I love about jazz is just music really it's, it's how it's the moment it's the improvisation in the moment it's the the fact that we have no idea what's gonna happen next and we are just in this instant just try to react and interacting with each other that's particular that's I think something real special that is unique to jazz I would say but I just uh, in general I just love music and I, I have a special a special, how could I say that, something special for jazz, of course, because I was born listening to that music, you know. And I live, I live for improvising and being able to just being in the instant, which is all what jazz is all about, basically. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Mr. Greg Robert for his time, as well as the staff and management here at the Jazz Standard. 
As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace. Thank you.